Ashley here at Create Full Art, and I'm going to share with you my top 10 artist hacks right here. So, the first one is a portable easel. So this is what I use. It's kind of big and heavy. Ugh. Since this is live, I have to do it this way. And the reason why I like the portable easel is because I can put all of my stuff, all my junk and everything in here and it organizes it and it keeps it safe from pets and from my kids. And I can take it anywhere I go. So that's why I love it. And now I'm going to get it off of my table because it's taking up too much space. All right, so that's my first artist hack. And number two is use plates versus pallets. Now, the reason for this is because you see this clean plate and you see this pallet that's not clean? Well, a plate is much easier to wash and if you are teaching a whole group of people, then using disposable plates is obvious. And as you can see, um, there's like little ridges and stuff on here and I just, I don't take the time to clean it because it's annoying to clean. So I use plates instead. And another thing that I've used because sometimes you learn how to room on a plate, um, I use a cookie sheet and then I put parchment paper on the cookie sheet, tape it down, and then I have more room. Say I'm using oils on a big canvas, I use my cookie sheet. So that's hack number two. I'm just gonna throw this over here. Okay, number three. I use mason jars with lids for everything. So I store water, you know, and if I'm like going out and I'm going to paint, then I can just put the lid on and shake it up and it's okay. And then I use like little mason jars and there's all sorts of sizes of these things for like my mediums and I store, which I didn't show you this, but I use also buckets, but I store like my pencils in it and all sorts of stuff. So using mason jars is cheap. And if you can see right here, this one I didn't pay for. I just collect mason jars and collect jars from all sorts of things. And then I clean them and I use them and it's cheap. So that's hack number two and for number three, huh? And we're on number four. Okay, so I use water mixable oils instead of just regular oil paints. And the reason for that is because I don't like toxic things in my house. So if you have pets and kids and that type of thing, then, well, even if you have like health problems or you don't like to have toxic things in your house, <laughs> you don't even have to have kids and pets. Um, these are, uh, you can mix them with water. So you don't have to use mineral spirits or turpentine. And I don't know about you, but when I use mineral spirits, even the odorless kind, it like gives me a headache anyways. And I just don't like using it because it's toxic. So I use these and then I check on the back to check and see. I don't know if you can see that. I don't know. Anyway. I, if it conforms to ASTM California standards and just make sure that the colors you're using aren't toxic because that isn't good either. And these come with all sorts of mediums. So all the mediums you use with your oils, your regular oils, there is a water mixable medium that goes with the water mixable oils. So it's really cool that they have that and they work exactly like oils. So that is my best hack. Non-toxic is great. Love technology. Okay, we are on the next hack. Number five, trace with a watercolor pencil. I've seen a lot of people trace with just regular pencils and then they have to erase it on the canvas or on their watercolor paper. And it's just not cool because all you have to do is trace 
with a watercolor pencil and then you can wipe off any mistakes there's not a lot of water on this okay on the canvas or you can even dab it on watercolor paper just make sure you don't scrub it because you'll ruin your watercolor paper and also i don't even worry about erasing any of my lines because i just paint over them and the watercolor just goes right into my paints and it disappears and then i don't see any pencil lines or any pencil lines underneath my paint and i also use this for making murals I use watercolor pencil on my wall and then also the watercolor just disappears into my paint on my walls so it's perfect and I love it I love this hack okay so that is was hack number five we are on hack uh, number six okay trace or transfer your sketch sketches or drawings with charcoal Okay, so this is the only piece of charcoal I could find because I think my toddler got into my charcoal pencils and broke them all. But all you have to do is if you're tracing something, then you can use the back side of it and use light to trace if you want it to go the right direction. Or you can just trace over this and transfer it onto your paper. So I'm drawing it right now. And then let's just transfer it on to my top artifact paper and you, you won't be able to see it because it's too dark. But that's how you can do that. And then another way you can do it is using charcoal powder. And I put charcoal powder in a nylon or a sock and then I go all over it. And then I use a pencil. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that was open. And then I use a pencil and then it transfers it onto the paper. Okay, let's get rid of this mess. All right, next hack. That's the thing about charcoal powder is it gets everywhere, but it's easy to just wipe it off. So that's easy. Okay, right. hack number seven, block in your paintings. Okay, the reason why I do this, I don't do this on all of my paintings, but the reason why I do do this on some of my paintings is because it makes it a lot faster. And I don't have a whole bunch of time in my life with uh, kids and all sorts of things that I do um, to just sit and paint for hours and hours on end and wait for paint to dry before I put on the next layer and all that stuff. So I block in a lot. Not for every painting, but this works for some. So I have um, this tutorial on how to paint clouds and you'll notice that I use the blocking in technique and a lot of people just when they think of clouds they think okay putting layers and layers and layers over it and that works great but I just I sometimes I just don't have time for that so I block in my shapes and that is hack number seven done we're on hack number eight use a color board okay I have a whole video on how to make one of these color boards. You can see the link in the description or you can look it up under my channel and, and it'll say how to mix the right colors. And um, a lot of people ask what colors, you know, ask an artist, what colors did you use for this painting and all that kind of stuff. Well, the problem with that question is between brands, um, even the same color name can actually have a different color tint to it and so that doesn't work and then also every time you want to go and paint a project you have to buy new paint for it that's not good either so basically I just say use what you have make color board and then find the color that they're using and use what you have to make that color it's cheaper it's easier you'll get the same results so it doesn't matter but if obviously if you want to go buy, buy a lot of paint you can I just don't recommend that so all right that's that hack number eight we're on hack number nine framing is expensive so I try to use standard frames so here's an example of a standard frame you get at a store I really like this frame because it's kind of shabby chic and that's what's in my daughter's room. 
So this is was like, I don't know, maybe $12, really cheap, an expensive frame. And if you're trying to get a frame like this for an original painting, it's probably going to cost you like $80 to $200 to $300. So what I do is I just take out the glass. And then I paint on a canvas panel. Of course, this is just for my home, not for like clients and things. <laughs> So I paint on this canvas panel and then I put it inside my frame. This is live, so you have to like watch every little thing. All right, ta-da! And then you just hang it on your wall and that was a lot cheaper. So that's if you want to paint on a canvas panel. Now, hack number 10 is if you want to paint on a canvas with sides. So here I have my painting of my tulips with the sides. And so what I like to do is instead of framing it because it's so expensive, plus everybody has their different preferences in frames, um, I don't frame it or I paint it on wood. But if I'm going to paint it on a canvas, I like to use these little clippy claw things to hang it up. And I'll, oh, and since it's light, I can't do Okay, so it just goes in there like that, and then I can go hang this on the wall, and that's super cheap, and you can't even see it. And um, the reason why I use these, and I don't use these for like big installations or big canvas um, canvases, but it's a temporary thing, and um, it works, let's see, that's number nine. Okay, it works better than storing your paintings on the floor. It works for temporary paintings on your wall. You can hang it in your home without getting out all of your tools because, you know, we don't like to get out tools. And you don't have to drill into your canvas frame. So that was hack number 10. And those are my artist hacks. And thank you so much for joining me. I hope you like this. This is the first time I've gone live, so it was pretty darn scary. And I hope it actually worked on your end. And uh, I will see you next week with another video. Bye. <laughs> I don't know how to turn it off. <laughs>